is my joy to welcome you to today's podcast. Our prayer is that the Lord will minister to you in a special way during our time together. Let's look to God in prayer as we come to uh, study God's word. Father, we thank you. Thank you that you are faithful. Thank you that you speak to us through your word. Thank you, Lord, that your word is alive and active and powerful. I thank you, Lord, for your word can minister to us where no one else can. No psychologist, no psychiatrist, no doctor, Lord, can reach that part of our heart, our spirit, our soul, Lord, that is deeply in need of your touch. And I pray that you would speak, minister to each one of us, and we give you glory in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. One man was feeling unwell for a few days, and finally he went to see the doctor. You know, during this corona time, people are scared of going to hospitals, but he felt he had to go. Finally, he went. The doctor did a careful investigation and mentioned that his condition is extremely critical, and that, and really, there is not much hope. The doctor gave him, you have about 12 to 18 hours to live, and the man was shocked. The doctor looked and says, I'm not sure if you will make it through this night. The man felt very sad. He went back home and he decided he was going to spend the rest of his hours with his wife. They were going to talk. They were going to reminisce some of the lovely times they had together. And so so they kept on talking. He went and told his wife. They kept on talking, talked about the kids, talked about how life was, talked about the holidays and the fun, some of the fights they had, some of the arguments and some of the issues they had. And, and he kept talking. He kept looking sometimes here and there. He kept talking to his wife. They went into several hours in the night. And when he looked at his wife, he found her sleeping. Suddenly shook her up and says, Darling, you're sleeping. The wife said, what to do? You don't have to wake up in the morning, but I have to. (laughs) Winston Churchill was at a very narrow bridge and he came across an enemy commander. And as he faced the commander, no, none of these two leaders and their soldiers were willing to move aside to let the other man go. The enemy commander shouted from one side and said, you know, I never make room for fools. I never make room. I never make way for fools. Winston Churchill was shocked. He looked at the man and says, I always do. And he steps aside. (laughs) He let the man go. Friend, I want to talk to you about tackling the real enemy. Tackling the real enemy. Now, we've been going through a period of time when it's been difficult. And uh, people are going through all kinds of challenges. Today, the world has one common enemy. What is it? Coronavirus. This COVID time has been difficult for many families. People have gone through sickness. Some have gone through the death of a loved one. In some cases, people are just enduring. This lockdown period has been difficult for people with difficult marriages. They have to see the same spouse they have not been talking to for a long time. And they have to stay under the same roof. It's been difficult. Job was was such a relief to go out. They didn't mind driving an hour and a half or two just to go get away from the difficult spouse. Friends, though it has been difficult, it has also been uh, brought in a lot of blessings. For us at home, it has been a great time. We've had quality time with the boys. I mean, they had no choice. They are, you know, they are on Zoom. I mean, you know, today the world has become Zoombies. They are on Zoominars. And uh, they, they, they are always, I mean, kids are always on the, uh, uh, on the tab or after the school. What do you do? You are at home. At one time, they didn't go out because their neighboring apartment, somebody had a quarantine. I mean, somebody had some kind of, so they had quarantine. So nobody went out. They Have to look at it. So we have some fun time. I've been visiting the kitchen. Did some cooking with my wife. We had some good time with dad. Sometime the last month and I have been good with IPL matches. We got to watch IPL with the family. Sometimes we watch a good movie. Now some of you are very uh, scared of watching movies. That's all right. But we got to watch some. 
But we also had some wonderful times of worship. We had some intense time in our daily worship time. The boys are playing the music and we've had heaven down. We've also been having some wonderful time of studying God's word. And the boys would ask questions and we would discuss. One of the books we've been going through uh, now is the book of 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel is a rich book. Uh, if you haven't read it, I encourage you to read it because such great stories and uh, lessons we can learn. And we've been going through the story of David and King Saul. Now, all of us are familiar with the story. Saul was chosen by God to be the first king of Israel. Saul defeated the enemies of, the, of his country, including the Ammonites, the Philistines, the Moabites, the Amalekites, and he reigned for 40 plus years. The episode in 1 Samuel 23 begins with David killing the Goliath. And after that, the ladies sang a song that created all the trouble. Ladies, you got to be careful what kind of song you sing. Amen. Ladies sang a song. They said, Saul has killed his thousand, but David has killed his 10,000. When Saul heard that song, something happened inside. He started getting so uncomfortable. How can they credit this man 10 times more than me? I'm the king. And he felt restless. He felt angry. He felt vengeance. He felt uh, 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 an anger. Jealousy and deep insecurity. This drove him to madness to the point to have such a insatiable hunger to murder the shepherd boy. First Samuel 18 verse 12. Saul was afraid of David because the Lord was with David and had departed from Saul. Though it was one-sided, King Saul treated David as his enemy. David never thought of him as the enemy. But it was almost one-sided. He tried to kill David on numerous occasions. Twice he hurled the spear at David. When David had come to the palace to play for the king, he played the harp. I want you to know, musicians, listen to me. There is an anointing when you play the music. And I know that. There are two kinds of music. Sometimes you do it just for your soul. So you feel excited. But there is the other kind of music that touches your spirit. And your spirit communicates with the holy God. Amen. Soul is something that, that gets people excited. I want you to know when it comes to worship, there is a worship that excites the emotions of people. But there is also worship that connects with almighty God. And that's what we want. We have some anointed worship leaders. And I'll tell you, Pastor Suraj is... I mean, there are many of them, but Pastor Suraj, who is heading our worship team and ministry, he is anointed. He is anointed. There is worship that connects with your spirit. That goes beyond what you see on the screen and the smoke machine and the lights. It goes beyond that in touching Almighty God. Amen. David was anointed. When he played the harp, evil spirit left. When we play anointed music, evil spirits will leave the sanctuary. Evil spirits will leave people that come with that. And, and bondages are broken. Friends, we need worship that, that will bring heaven down on earth. I'm so glad for our team. They do such a great job. 1 Samuel 18, 15. When Saul saw how successful he was, he was afraid of him. At one point, Saul decided... To challenge this man, you know, he tried to lure him with his daughter and say, hey, I will give it. And finally, he got her married to someone else and then found out his another daughter. I think her name is Michal, M-I-C-H-A-O, Michal. And she was in love with David. And when Saul came to know he was in love, he said, I'm going to do something. I'm going to put a, a, a trap for him. I'm going to say, you know, I want you to go and kill 100 Philistines and bring evidence to me. Saul felt, you know, when he goes to kill these guys, one of those guys is going to kill him. But David goes out and kills 200 of them and brings evidence. And Saul had to give the daughter in marriage to David. One time he sent soldiers to Michal's house and say, hey, when you find this man sleeping, bring him to me so I can kill him. 
His daughter put an idol on the bed and let David escape. Several times in chapter 7, 18 and 19, Saul sent messengers to go and kill, to go and bring him so he can kill him. And the messengers goes to Ramah and finds themselves prophesying on three different occasions. And finally, Saul himself goes with vengeance, with murder in his heart to kill King David. King, uh, Dottie, sorry, kill David. And when he goes there in the presence of Samuel, this murderous man started prophesying how God was in control. How God was in control. So many times, so many times. In chapter 23, Saul is bringing 3,000 soldiers to search for one shepherd boy. First Samuel 26, Saul is again going. Seven years, David spent in Saul's palace. And then four years, he was hunted by Saul. Another four years, he was at Ziklag, acting like a madman and being a friend of the enemy king until Saul dies at, on Mount Gilboa. King David writes, those who hate me, Psalm 69 verse 4, those who hate me without reason outnumber the hairs on my head. Many are my enemies without cause, those who seek to destroy me. David had so many enemies, but God was with him. First Samuel 23, 14. Day after day, Saul searched for him, but God did not give David into his hands. Hallelujah. In chapter 26, Abishai looks at David and, you know, uh, Saul was hiding in a cave and Saul, uh, sorry, David was hiding and Saul comes in search and Saul actually sleeps in that place with the soldiers and David was there. David comes to the Saul and finds him sleeping and Abishai said, right now, God has given the enemy into your hands. Why don't you thrust him with your spear? It just takes one, just one. Allow me to just thrust him and I will not strike him twice. David looked at him and says, hey, Verse 9, don't destroy him. Who can lay a hand on the Lord's anointed and be guiltless? As surely as the Lord lives, he said, the Lord himself will strike him. He will go into battle and perish. But the Lord forbid that I should lay a hand on the Lord's anointed. Now get the spear and water jug that are near his head and let's go. And so David took Saul's spear and water jug, but he would not kill. Look at this man. Look at the integrity of his heart. Friends, David had so many enemies, so many people that treated him as an enemy, especially the king of the land. Do you have enemies? Every now and then people have some kind of an enemy. Do you have one? Who is an enemy? An enemy is someone who hates you, who opposes you, who threatens you, who attacks you, who fights you, who harms you, who seeks your downfall, who tries to ruin your good name, who seeks revenge. There are different kinds of enemies. There are personal enemies. There are enemies of the state. There are political enemies, enemies of war. There are spiritual enemies or family enemies or silent enemies. Some of you are looking at, looking at me and you are probably looking at your spouse and you probably think your spouse is your enemy. I need to tell you that's not true. Now some of you are smiling real hard. Some of you are thinking your father-in-law is your enemy or your mother-in-law or your sister-in-law, someone. You're looking to your left and to your right and say, <laughs> he's preaching, you know, he's preaching. Listen, your mother-in-law is not your enemy. You may consider her to be one, but she is not. I've also come across the term frenemies. Have you heard this term frenemies? A frenemy is a combination of a person who is a friend as well as an enemy. In other words, he poses to be a friend, but deep in his heart, he is an enemy. A frenemy is an oxymoron. In other words, it's totally contradictory in terms. But there are frenemies, you know. You probably encounter one or more of them. A frenemy is a false friend. A character is a friend, but deep inside an enemy. Pretend to be a friend, actually an enemy. 
They hang around you because there are benefits. But deep in their heart, they have a dagger to thrust your spirit, thrust your heart, thrust into your heart. It's a toxic friendship. They're an enemy in disguise. You should distance yourself from people like that. Mike Tyson said, everyone who fights you is not your enemy. And any, everyone who helps you is not your friend. What a beautiful statement. Mike Tyson, the boxer, he said, everyone who fights you is not your enemy. And everyone who helps you is not your friend. Do you have a frenemy? It's like Judas, you know. Judas was with Jesus. He was there at the feeding of the 5,000 and he did everything. He saw the miracles, raising the dead, healing the blind, healing the leper. He was there at the teaching of Jesus. But given a chance, he would not hesitate to plant a kiss on the master's cheek. John 2, a beautiful scripture. You probably never came across this, but let me show you. John 2, verse 23. Now, while Jesus, while he was in Jerusalem at the Passover festival, many people saw the signs he was performing and believed in his name. Verse 24. Shall we read it together? Verse 24, everybody. But Jesus, is it there? Verse 24. Ah, let's read it. But Jesus would not entrust himself to them, for he knew all people. Jesus would not just fall for what they're saying. They're following them. They love him. They say all the nice things. But Jesus would not entrust. Why would Jesus not entrust to them? Didn't he love all people? He knew people who acted. He would not entrust himself to them, for he knew all people. Do you have enemies? Vincent Churchill puts it this way. You have enemies? Good. That means you've stood up for something sometime in your life. Who is the real enemy? Who is your real enemy? You know, when we talk about enemies, so many things come to your mind. You talk about, you think of people, you think of system, you think of your boss in the office, you think of your colleague. <coughs> You think of so many people. But who is your real enemy? You know, when it comes to India as a nation, India, as a nation, nations have enemies. Are you with me? India has. But before I go to India, let me talk about the external enemies. I want to talk about Israel and Palestine. They've been loggerheads for several decades. Neither Israel, I mean, uh, Israel and Palestine, they are arch enemies. You know, when I visited Israel some time ago, they told me that Philistines and Palestine are two different groups of people. Philistines in the Old Testament and Palestine today are two different groups. But I find it difficult to believe because they are from the same region. And they still fight with the people of Israel today. They're from the same region. Now, I can imagine Palestine, if they were from some other part, they occupy the same geographical re uh, region, and the names are similar. Palestine, Philistine. David killed the Philistine. In 1 Samuel 17, King Saul defeated the enemies of his country. The external enemies, the Ammonites, the Philistines, the Moabites, the Amalekites. In 2 Samuel 8, David has victories over his enemies outside his country. Philistines, Moabites, Zoba, Armenians, Hamath, Edom, Moab, Ammonites, Philistines, Amalek. Verse 14, the Lord gave David victory wherever he went. Nations sometimes have enemies outside. India well, they say we have enemies. They say Pakistan is an enemy. I don't know. But it has been told. And, and there are constant threats that keep coming into Kashmir. There are terrorists keep coming in. Our soldiers are fighting a war. The insurgency, the terrorism that comes from across the border. <coughs> There's infiltration. I remember in 2003 when my brother was killed in Kashmir. 
the newspaper people, the television, the, the journalists actually came to our home. They asked a question to me. They said, what do you think about Pakistan? I mean, this was a time when, you know, he was just killed and his body had just come. We, had, we haven't even buried the body. And the journalists are asking me the question, what do you think of Pakistan? You know, it's those people that killed your brother. Basically, they were wanting something of revenge, something for me to say something nasty, something that I would say that I need to get even. But I looked at the journalists and said, who is our enemy? Really, those people outside? Who is our real enemy? Because they were wanting to record what I say and play it in the news or write it in the news to say, hey, now the whole country has to have that vengeance against Pakistan. Nowadays we have China who's been trying to do a lot of problem across the border. But friends, who is the real enemy? We have external enemies, but every nation has internal enemies. King Saul's greatest problem was not the Philistines or the Amalekites, but his greatest problem was David, somebody within. The internal enemy was more a threat to him than the external enemy. In India, we have threats within the nation. We have the radicals and the terrorists. We have the Maoists and the Naxalites inside the country. The government faces more problem with the Naxalites within the country. They are loggerheads, one with another. So my question is, who is the real enemy for a nation? The external ones or the internal ones? When it comes to the church, I want to ask you, who is the real enemy? During the first century, the church had external enemies. They had enemies that were Romans that would come and persecute. Roman soldiers, Emperor Nero was against the church. They persecuted, they beat, they, they, they killed, they imprisoned, they beheaded. The church faced a lot of persecution in the first century. But they also had persecution from the Pharisees and Sadducees, the religious people. The religious people outside pose a threat. Today, the church in India faces a challenge. We have challenges outside, the external forces. We have the fundamental people. We have the radical people. We have the religious extremists. We have challenges from people outside. Every day, some church is getting persecuted. Some pastor is getting beaten up. Some nun is getting raped. Some school, Christian school. And we have problems. And they, are, they have issues with regard to FCRN and the Christian NGOs. There are challenges. There are challenges. Who? We face challenges all the time from people outside. I know pastors that are beaten up. Recently in, in Haryana, they actually came and brought an idol and kept inside the church. There are challenges from external. But friend, we also have internal challenges. Paul faced a lot of challenges from within. Today the church faces severe challenges from within. The challenges outside are there, but the challenges within are more fierce. There are people with wrong doctrines. They come and teach nonsense. Today we have people that teach things that are not biblically sound. They only wanted you to be lopsided. They don't teach the entire Bible. I don't know which Bible they read. The God of the Bible is a very balanced God. But the preachers today will only preach things 
that talk about your blessing, that talk about how you can get rich, that talk about how you can find an aeroplane and how you can get. Now, I'm not against God blessing people. God will bless, but I'm against preachers who only preach that. I do have a problem. When you only say there's only blessings coming your way, it doesn't matter how you live. I do have a problem. We have problem within. Recently, there was an issue regarding something and Pastor Milton has been, uh, you know, in touch with some of those people. There are two factions with regard to something to do with Christians, something that can bless the Christian community. Two factions are fighting and the blessing that has come is, is really been withheld for some time. Isn't it? The problem is not from outside. The problem is from within. Within the church, I remember a, a dear family telling me, Pastor, I left my church because the committee fights inside. The committee is always fighting. The committee is always threatening the pastor. It's creating trouble for the pastor. They come and do things. We have trouble within. There are the liberal people. There are those who teach wrong doctrines. There are those who betray their own people to the radicals. People who create rifts and opposition. Jude, there's only one chapter, verse 4. For certain individuals whose condemnation was written long ago have secretly slipped in among you. There are ungodly people who pervert the grace of our God into a license for immorality. We are talking about teachings that happen today. Who prevent, who pervert the grace of our God into a license for immorality and deny Jesus Christ our only sovereign and Lord. Verse 8, these ungodly people pollute their own bodies, reject authority and heap abuse on celestial beings. I mean, it happened in the first century. It's happening today in the 21st century. Same things. How can God's people give license to immorality, live in immorality, and consider it to be okay? You know, as long as God blesses me. I also believe the devil can make you rich. Devil can make you so rich so you don't need God. Devil can make you so rich, so wealthy, so you don't have to come to church. Why not? What can he do to prevent you from following God? Can he bring a beautiful lady? Can you entice you with sex? Can you entice you with money? Why not? If that will take you away from God, so be it. How many well-to-do people have stopped reading the Bible? How many well-to-do people have stopped coming to church? How many well-to-do people are busy with parties over the weekend and would never have times of worship? They've forgotten where they have kept the Bible. It's there somewhere, gathering dust. Friends, a church has enemies within. Now let me talk about a family. When it comes to a family, there are external enemies. For King David, King Saul's family was always at enmity with him, even after King Saul died. Some of us may have neighbors or house owners who are unfriendly and, or enemies to you. Do you have your house owner who is an enemy? Or your neighbor? You try to avoid them or not speak to them. But friends, there is the internal enemy, your own family members. For King David, the greatest enemy was not King Saul, but his own son, Absalom. Absalom grew up to be his enemy. He tried to take over his kingdom. At one point, David had to run away from his palace with his wives, with his children, with the soldiers, with his key people, and he's running for his life to flee from his own son, Absalom. 
Some of your greatest problem will not come from outside your house, but it will come from within. Issues with your husband or with your wife. Oh, how many couples are going through challenges? They're unable to worship. They're unable to come together. They're unable to eat together. They're unable to stay in the same room. How many couples have gone through hell during this pandemic? Not because of the virus, but because of the problem within. Have you been angry with your spouse for months? For months? Eight, nine months? No talking? Even this week, while I was preparing the message, I had somebody call me, Pastor. My husband beat me up. This week, while I'm preparing the message, I'm counseling. Some of your challenges will come from your children or from your parents. Sometimes it comes from your in-laws or from your own siblings. You're not in talking terms with your own brother and sister because of financial matters, because of inheritance, because of what one parent did to one or the other. You're not in talking terms with your own in-laws. As a pastor, I deal in counseling with many people. And most of the issues have to do with those inside their house. Not their neighbor, not external people, not external issues. No one comes complaining to me that they had a problem with their immediate neighbor. Pastor, please help me. My neighbor did. I never come across that. They always tell me what happened within their home. Matthew 10 and verse 36, very interesting scripture. Jesus said this. A man's enemies will be the members of his own household. Now, I didn't say that. Jesus said that in Matthew 10 verse 36. So friend, as a family, do you come across enemies? Do you come across external enemies or are you having problems within? Finally, I want to talk about a believer and his enemies. A believer, external enemies, somebody who trusts in Yahweh, somebody who trusts in Jesus. King David writes, many are my enemies without cause, those who seek to destroy my life. Do you have external foes who seek to harm you or seek your downfall or seek your life? Personal enemies. Due to difference of opinion, you can't stand each other, you can't agree. Paul and Barnabas, great apostles, but they couldn't stand each other. In Acts chapter 15, Barnabas wanted to take John also called Mark with them, but Paul did not think it was wise to take him because he had deserted them in Pamphylia and had not continued with them in the work. Verse 39, they had such a sharp disagreement that they parted company. Paul, Apostle Paul, Barnabas, Apostle Barnabas had sharp disagreement that they parted company. I think sometimes it is good to part company. It's good. Barnabas took Mark and sailed for Cyprus. Now both of them are anointed. Both of them are called of God. But sometimes there are sharp disagreements within the camp. Barnabas took Mark and sailed for Cyprus. But Paul chose Silas and left, commended by the believers to the grace of the Lord. He went through Syria and Sicilia, strengthening the churches. I mean, these are godly people. They have had issues with somebody else of the faith. David had issues with Saul. Jesus himself had issues with his own apostle, Judas. Think of it. External enemies. But I want to talk about personally as a believer, your internal enemy is your own self. David's great problem was not King Saul, or the Philistines, or the giant Goliath, it, nor even his son Absalom. But his greatest problem was himself. His own sin, his own heart, 
his own weakness. Psalm 51 verse 4. Against you, you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. My friend, David's greatest problem was not all the people that he felt were enemies, but he himself was an enemy to himself. Who is your real enemy? David, who is your enemy? Is it King Saul? Is it Goliath? Is it the Philistines or the Amalekites? Is it your son Absalom? David comes to realize, oh yes, they may have had their problem, but the greatest problem is me. I should stop going to the terrace and look where I should not be look. I should stop going to that website. I should stop going to that social media that brings my downfall. Nobody sees what I do. But my greatest problem is not the person outside. It's the person inside. Apostle Paul's greatest problem was not Emperor Nero, nor were the Pharisees or Sadducees, nor the believers, not even Barnabas. Apostle Paul's greatest problem was himself. In Romans chapter 7, verse 14, verse 15, I do not understand what I do. For what I want to do, I do not do. And what I hate, I do. Verse 19, for I do not do the good I want to do, but the evil I do not want to do, this I keep on doing. Hello. Last time I shared the scripture, somebody got very upset. This was not written when Apostle Paul was an unbeliever. It was written when he was a believer. And he's saying, the things I want to do, I don't do. And the evil I do not want to do, I keep on doing. Apostle Paul, at another point in Corinthians, he says, I beat my body and make it my slave so that after having saved everybody, I do not lose the price. Paul is saying, I beat my body and make it my slave. My friends, your greatest enemy is you. Not your wife, not your in-laws, not your neighbor, not your boss, not Pakistan, not the terrorists. Our greatest problem is we. If you and I can lead yourself successfully, you have succeeded indeed. First Peter 5 and verse 8. Be alert and of sober mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Matthew 15, 18 and 19. But the things that come out of a person's mouth comes from the heart and these defile them. For out of the heart comes evil thoughts, murder, adultery, sexual immorality, theft, False testimony, slander. Jesus is saying, out of your own heart. James 4 and verse 4. Don't you know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Therefore, whoever wishes to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. Your greatest enemy is not outside. Your real enemy is not outside. You are living within that body. It's you. As I conclude, I'm going to call the worship team. I have news for you. When David faced the external enemies, the Bible says in 2 Samuel chapter 8, the Lord gave David victory wherever he went. Listen, listen. This is the key of crux what I want to share with you. All of you listen to me. When David faced external enemies... The Lord delivered him. The Lord was with him, gave him success wherever. But when David faced his own enemy himself, the Lord looked to see what he would do. Are, are you listening to me? The Lord will not fight your temptation. You have to. The Lord will enable you. The grace will help you. There is no temptation that has taken man where, whereby you will... But the God has given you a grace and a window and a door to escape the temptation. But friend, when you face that, 
you have to fight it god's spirit will enable you the grace will help you but you have to fight it hello are you with me when you face an external enemy the lord will fight your battles but you face an internal enemy god's grace god's spirit god's love will be with you you have to fight your own enemy god will not shut that computer for you god will not turn the power for you god will not turn off the internet for you god will not turn your turn you blind when you're with that woman god will not cause you to be lame and 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 and, and paralyzed when you're going out with that woman you have to fight your own battle personally can you say amen david failed to overcome the enemy within and he paid a huge price god expects each one of us to overcome the enemy within i want to read the scripture i shared a little while ago first corinthians 10:13 no temptation has overtaken you except what is common to mankind and god is faithful and he will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear but when you are tempted he will also provide a way out so you can endure it i love one scripture when a man's ways please the lord he makes even his enemies be at peace with him hallelujah hallelujah so my friend tackling the real enemy how do you tackle yourself and the challenges i pray that each one of us when we face our day to day when we come to the presence of god when we kneel down that our spirit will be crystal clear our conscience will be clear that we will stand before him and say god if there is any wicked way in me oh cleanse me lord wash me deep inside that that when we pray that we will not be a hypocrite our heart will not tell us you are a hypocrite you've got a mask you're trying to act holy but deep inside things are not right my friend i pray that we will stand in the presence of god and say god here is my heart it's a daily process the bible says he takes us from grace to grace from glory to glory so we can become and turn into the image of the very son of god amen what is god expecting from you not success not name not fame he's expecting you to look and act and behave and think like his son jesus christ that is the final goal of every christian that we will come into the image of the very son of god who gave his life for us i want you to close your eyes for a moment tackling the real enemy who is your enemy what are you really struggling what where are you really struggling my friend i want you to take a moment and say god create in me a clean heart create in me a clean heart purify my heart oh god that i will be holy i will be clean not to please somebody not to look good in front of my spouse or my family but deep inside i will be clean thank you for taking time to listen if you would like more information about our church or would like to make a comment please mail us at info@newlifeag.in at God bless you.